Hello, welcome back to a brand new video uh, for the channel. We've had a really good couple of weeks in, in Wales, as you'll find out shortly uh, when Dad talks you through our latest national winner. That's nine nationals now, something we're very proud of, and fingers crossed um, we'll have many more. Firstly, before I start this little part of the video, shout out to my nephew Luke Morgan, who's made us a new intro and a new outro for our video. So Luke, thanks very much. Means a lot, bud. Cheers. Okay. In this video, uh, we're going to show you our, our latest national winner, Olympic Dixie. Um, and as well as that, we're going to talk you through, I, I've been thinking, Dad and I've been thinking, putting our heads together, five tips to win a national. As, as I've said, we've been lucky enough now to win nine. Um, and uh, that is a common theme. You know, anybody that's successful in pigeon racing, in any sport really, that is a common theme. The harder you try, the luckier you get. I'm a firm believer in that. So, five top tips. Number one. To be successful well actually one and two we've said pigeons and a good loft really really important that you get the best pigeons that you can afford now these haven't got to be something that's hyped up on the market the internet a magazine these just got to be good pigeons really really important that you get your hands on pigeons that are as close to winners as possible and alongside that dad and i have said the loft you've seen our loft in our previous videos I'm very fortunate that Dad, that was Dad's retirement present to himself. It's a fantastic loft. The races are upstairs. Um, it's nice and dry. It's safe for the pigeons. And, and that's really important. Dad said when he was sort of learning to become a pigeon fancier, the first thing that he read about, the first thing he thought was important was the pigeons feeling safe in their environment. So if you can do that, the best way you can do that possible, that's what you're striving for. So one and two, pigeons and loft. Three, Dad said, a system or management. So you've got to have a really good system. You've got to be strict with your system. It's no good letting the birds out at six o'clock in the morning one day and the next day just letting them out in the evening for a fly themselves. Whatever system you're working, whether you're training them a lot, whether you're exercising them at home a lot, it's important that you stick to it. So that's really important that you've got a system that works for you. A system uh, might work for a, pigeon, um, a fancy that you buy birds off, but it might not necessarily work for yourself. So you've got to adapt your system. I think it was Einstein that said um, insanity is doing things over and over the same thing, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So you've got to evolve. You've got to change your system. We, we always change our system perhaps a little bit every year. Just tweak it a little bit and then see then how the birds perform. If they perform well, we'll stick to it. If they didn't, we'll go back to what we were doing. So it's really important that you have a system that works really, really well for you. Four, we've said is feed in. Now, as we've shown in our previous videos, we use the Matador range of corn, but I'm sure, I'm confident that we'd fly as well, fly in with Van Robies, um, Versalaga, Natural de Schumacher, Countrywide, some of the British, British band, uh, brands, Bamford's Top Flight, um, whatever it is. So it's important that you, you do your, your homework on what, whatever brand you use or that you're looking to use. Um, and then, I suppose, take the advice of the professionals. Use their feeding plans, which is what we do for the majority of the time with Matador. We believe in a varied diet, so we like to use, um, as we've said in the videos before, some pellets with, with our feed. Um, we also like to use a few supplements, which we've gone through before, brewer's yeast, oregano oils, things like that we think are really, really important. Just for that extra 5%, um, which we're all looking for. And last, which is really important to me, is patience. I've read over and over and over again in the British open world, how the patient fancier is the one that wins. We are, our strongest point is probably our young bird racing. And one of the reasons I think why we do particularly well in the young bird nationals is because we're patient. We don't go like a bull out of the gate for the early races. We, we prefer a patient approach. Again, that's not to say it might not work for you, but patience is really, really important. We prefer sprint middle distance racing, but if you're a long distance fancier, even more important again because your birds are going to make mistakes and you've got to be patient um, in believing in the birds that, that one day they will put a performance in. So be patient, definitely really, really important. So that's enough of me talking. On with today's video. Once again, as always, thanks for watching. Enjoy it and we'll see you next time.
Hello, welcome back. Another brand new video. Um, we've had a really good couple of weeks uh, since we last left you. As you can see, these are the old birds now. We've put them all together. Um, racing is finished. Um, it's now the um, middle of August. Um, and we had a really good end to the season. When we last recorded, uh, we were up to Maidstone. And the last old bird race then was from Hythe. Turned out there were over six and a half thousand pigeons at Hythe for the race. We didn't fancy it on the day because the wind wasn't really in our favour. Uh, northerly wind, we thought the winners would be a little bit south of us, but we had three birds arrive together, and there's Dad, and he's holding the winner. We've named her Olympic Dixie, um, so it's over to Dad, and he'll tell you a little bit about her. This is the, the, uh, the winner. She's a blue hen. Uh, as a young bird, she was there about every week, and uh, we thought a lot of her then. We think more of her now because, uh, you know, a national winner is a little bit uh, special and uh, we think this end is special. Um, so yeah, just one thing I, I'd like to say. Uh, when, when the three birds arrived, Carwin said that uh, if we were living in a diff different location, Dad, I think we'd have won the national today. Uh, and as it happens, we did win the national. So... Um, this is the hen, very proud of ourselves and uh, very proud of this hen. She's a cracking hen. Big hen, but uh, full of spirit. So yeah, really good performance on the day. She, she was in good form. She was um, sort of well up the week before from Maidstone. Um, and on the day, like I said, things, the stars aligned and uh, it worked out really well for us. So there she is, Olympic Dixie. Second was actually the cock she's paired to. We'll just go inside and have a little look. Uh, which we showed you in the last video and that's supersonic nick oh he's he's, uh, he's on the floor uh there he is supersonic nick we showed you in the last video we think he's really something special and uh if he can have a little bit of luck dodge the hawks keep taking the right line um he's gonna have many many more first prizes so he's now amassed two times first center section on the valley fed um second national high as a young bird and now second national hive as a yearling. So fingers crossed he goes one better because he'll be trying again in 2021. There's the third cock, uh, another dark cock, bred by Derek Nichols, um, a son of Manchester. We've called him all along Godano. He's been Godano as a young bird. And again, he's had a really, really good 2020. Um, three or four times he, he's, he's made the fed sheet and uh, has been amongst our first arrivals. So what we're going to do now, we're going to nip downstairs and we'll show you the mother of our winning hen. See you in a bit. Okay, here we are back. Here's Dad and this is the mother of Olympic Dixie, first Welsh Southeast National Hive 2020. This hen was a very good racer herself. She was in the in the Cannon Valley. We, it comprises of five clubs and... On four occasion, three occasions, sorry, uh, she was first uh, bird in the valley. So the genes are there and uh, she's passed it on now to her daughter. So there she is, cracking in. She's off um, the Cyrus Pre-Olympic, uh, a prolific uh, winner for us. He's, uh, he's bred loads of very good pigeons. So there she is, that's the end. She hasn't got a name as such, but uh, she's a very good end. She's a very good hen, yeah, known, as us, uh, known to us as the 27 hen, um, like lots of the birds really, but you know, going by the ring numbers. But she was a, a fine racer in a day, and it's now probably the third or fourth um, sort of really good racer that she's bred. And that's the way we like to do it. Once, they've, once the birds have bred a good pigeon, uh, regardless generally of what performances they put up, um, we, we'll sort of put them, put them to stock because I think they say racing is silver, breeding is gold, and... Um, that's really important to us. So there we are. So there's the team for 2021. Um, maybe one or two uh, perhaps won't stay because we probably haven't got room for them all because like lots of people with a lack of racing, um, we sort of ended up with uh, with a bigger team than normal. But we're looking forward to it. Young Bird started a few weeks back. We had a good race and we're hopeful now that we're building something special as we head into September. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.